This video is supported by Brilliant.org. The evolution of the space industry can be boiled down to a few key factors. For the past 50 years, it's mainly about geopolitics. 1960s and 70s are undoubtedly the golden ages of space. Cold War was the fuel. But for the next 50 years, it will be different. It's about NASA's decisions, it's about China's decisions, it's about EU's decisions, it's about Russia's decisions, and it's about India's decisions. But on top of all that, it's about private space industry's decisions. It's a much more diverse future with all kinds of possibilities. So I want to go through all of their plans for the next 50 years and see what patterns and indications we can find. Let's start with NASA. NASA is the most influential space agency in the world and the utmost authority on anything space. SpaceX wouldn't be where it is today without NASA's help. NASA is also the most transparent, so let's look at NASA's budget to get a sense of what it plans to do. Here is the latest NASA budget for 2020. Out of $21 billion, $10.7 billion will be used for exploration campaigns. Space Launch System, Lunar Gateway, Lunar Lander are the key components. Therefore, this is the first indication of what NASA's version of future looks like. On top of the budget, let's look at NASA's current and future missions. Here are all of them. I'll leave a link down below. Not only does NASA have the most variety of missions, the breadth and depth of projects it's working on is unparalleled. Mars 2020 that further explores the possibility of lives on Mars, Sykes spacecraft that will explore the origin of planetary cores by studying the metallic asteroid between Mars and Jupiter, and SWAT that surveys our ocean topography, among many other missions. So the pattern here is this. NASA wants to bring humans back to the moon. Many of the research projects are to validate and confirm the usage of certain technology for safe manned missions in space. Mars is on the schedule, but not yet in reach. However, project like Psyche could be a good stepping stone for building a sustainable Martian base. NASA also wants surveying technology that protect the security of the United States, among many other scientific missions. China would be the most influential in space technology after NASA considering the amount of money it's spending on space projects. The central advantage of China is its struggle for recognition and its ability of long-term planning. Space development is costly and more often than not, lacking in returns. However, it is believed to be the pinnacle of tech capability. China will use this as a way to showcase its strength to get recognized as a technologically advanced nation. Also, as a technocratic nation, meaning the leaders of China are mostly engineers, they do understand the initial investment required for long-term returns in research and development. Space technology could create spin-offs that rip benefit for the years to come. China with its Made in China 2025 plan specifies that aerospace technology is a key area of importance. Therefore, China's course of action will be important for the future of space. So what does China plan to do? Three things, satellites and its applications, manned space flight, as well as deep space exploration. The first one is practical, and the next two are to get recognitions around the world. China is also working on its own reusable rocket to make all of the above economically viable. Since China is a technocratic nation, it has very practical goals in space. Therefore, deep space exploration would be less of a priority for China. ESA, on the other hand, will be focusing a lot on space research that includes deep space exploration and manned space flight. This is what I love about ESA. It has money, it consists of strong, powerful and wealthy nations, and it doesn't want hegemony like China and the United States. This is why ESA can work on scientific researches without interference from domestic politics. It will be a good agent for deep space research and development. Russia and India will also play a strong role in the industry. The Indian RLV and PSLV will be a really competitive vehicle in sending commercial payloads, and Soyuz will continue to be a powerhouse for manned space missions. But just like ESA, both do not have the ambitions of the Chinese and the Americans, but will be a strong competitor commercially and in terms of exploration. Lastly, private companies will play an increasingly bigger role in the space race. Already, China and India is following SpaceX in experimenting reusability. China with its Chengzhen 8 and India with RLV. We would see more examples like this in the future, especially with SpaceX experimenting different materials for re-entry. Private space companies will continue to rely on the state for funding, and state agencies will rely on private companies for fast and reliable innovation. 
This is the trend we will be seeing in the decades to come. However, I'm not going to end my video here because scientific breakthroughs has never been about the known. It's about the possibilities and the unknowns. Now, what do I mean by that? In the course of explorations, breakthroughs could happen that will change the course forever. For example, reusability of rockets is a breakthrough that makes deep space missions much more economically viable. Recently, the new NASA budget has cut fundings of the space launch system that demonstrates the effect of this breakthrough. The industry is feeling it. Here are some of the future possibilities. Number one, asteroid belt and Mars. This could change the economics of space missions to Mars forever. Some believe that with the endless resources in the asteroid belt between Mars and Jupiter, we could set up a self-sustaining Martian base. This technology is not yet realistic at the moment, but with SpaceX and other working on bringing down the cost of space transportation, it is not impossible. Number two, solar power on the moon. Some also believe that solar power on the moon could be an interesting alternative to solve our energy and pollution crisis on Earth. Imagine if we could get our energy needs from the moon and never worry about pollution anymore. It is called the LSP technology. In fact, Shimizu Corporation of Japan believes that LSP could be such a great idea that it's gonna build a lunar ring that circles the entire moon. Half the ring will be lit at any time of the year and energy will be beamed back to Earth for consumption. LSP is believed to be cheaper than on Earth because of the better weather conditions. There is no cloud on the moon to block access to the sun. Number three, possible spin-offs. Here's a list of real life applications of NASA technology. Among them are LASIK, artificial limb, and even GPS that are used with our smartphones. Many of them are critical technologies that we use in our daily lives. It is very possible that more critical technologies will spin off from a love for space and create unexpected value for our society. It's not hard to see that deep space exploration is once again on top of many countries' agendas. Reusable technology is the critical agent that makes space accessible. And with this technology, many countries plan to bring human back to the moon and eventually Mars. However, one thing that's different this time is the role private industry plays. Private companies with their innovative and big ideas can change space forever because when innovation happens from every one of us, the fountain of creativity is limitless. I'm happy to see that finally it's up to all of us to decide what the future of space looks like. Rome wasn't built in a day, neither are rockets. It takes practice and persistence to master the science behind building spacecraft and it takes engineers like us to build them. Brilliant.org is a great learning tool for that. Just recently, Brilliant launched a new feature called Daily Challenges. Every day, Brilliant publishes several challenges that provide a quick and fascinating view into math, science, and engineering. My recommendation for you today is to start with this challenge on Rocket Earth. How much thrust do you need to propel our Earth to Jupiter's orbit? It's a fascinating question and a great way to start building your daily learning habit. Go to brilliant.org slash Curious Elephant today and sign up for free. First 200 people click on the link will get 20% off the annual premium subscription so you can access all the daily challenges in the archives as well. By doing so, it also helps this channel. So big thank you from me as well.